You know, I, I, uh, I applaud the governor of Indiana for the stance that he took. And I'm telling you what, you talk about getting blasted. This man is getting blasted from all different directions. Are you hearing me? It just shows you what type of society that we are living in, folk. Hallelujah. Understand something. Uh, the Christian rights was, uh, Bill of Rights was passed by Clinton, uh, Clinton, I believe it was back in 1993, to give the Christian uh, his, his freedom as well. And uh, it just seems like, you know, uh, this nation and, and much of the nation don't want the Christian to have a voice. But I don't know about you, but yes, he's being lamb blasted, lampooned, doing everything they can possibly do because he took his stand, hear me, of, of, uh, um, of, of uh, homosexuality and uh, the rights for the Christian. If uh, they come into a, a bakery and ask them, you know, will you bake us a cake? They've got a right to say, no, I, I won't do it. I won't participate because that, that, that bothers my... Christian Judeo conscience, and I'm telling you, they just t- they're taking it to the extremes. Believe me, to try to lamb blast and and come against. And man, I was listening to some of the talk radio shows, and they said uh, some of these uh, guys. I was listening to to Lima radio station. I don't know who the guy was, but sometimes you just feel like reaching through the radio and grabbing a man by the neck and shaking him a little bit. And he said, "I pray to God that every every homosexual." is down there this weekend on the, on the doorsteps in Indianapolis and, and everything else. And understand me, man, I'm telling you what, they've got the, they've got the Colts backing uh, the homosexual deal. They've got um, uh, the basketball teams. They've got uh, all different types of things, folks. I'm telling you, we are living in troublesome times. And I know John's going to have a lot to say about, about those things over the weekend. Praise the Lord forevermore. But understand me, the Lord spoke these words to us. Always remember this, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And man, I'm telling you, we are living in that day and in that age in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm saved, but understand something. Strap up your boot laces, because I'm telling you, persecution is going to come to the house of God like it has never, like we've never seen before. I'm not saying the worldly church, because they're not going to get persecuted. Are you hearing me? But if you take a stand on this Bible, you will be persecuted for Christ's sake. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I've already prepared my heart. I don't care what they think. Bless the Lord. All I care about is what God thinks in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. I trust you're with me in that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Any testimonies tonight? Bless the Lord that you want to... Jeff. Uh, it's been what, about a year ago. We we, uh, we had to our constitution of the church that we would not perform homosexual exactly. marriages in this church or have any extension of this church that, that would be used that way. But I believe that that and we've talked about this. You and I have that this is the the, the, the next big test. This is the five wise and five foolish virgins. Yeah. Because the homosexual, you got to remember, they're they're talking about bakers now. Yeah. But it's a step away from saying it from the church. Yeah. And they're going to say, if you're not going to perform homosexual marriages, we're taking away your tax exempt status. Exactly. That's the very next thing. It's yeah. right around the corner. So you're right. First is going to come to the, to the church that stands firm on the Bible. Yeah. You know, I believe like, no it. more is it the the the, the word that, that that this nation goes by. You know, yeah. we're not a Christian nation anymore. <laughs> we're 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 being led by a king. And it's his way, and it's filtering yeah. down to the very roots of our society now. Exactly. I mean, I, I believe wholeheartedly with you. This, this is a, this is something that's just not going to go away. I mean, it's, it's going to be something that the Christians going to have to endure uh, before the Lord comes back. I believe it's going to fall, yeah. make a great that great apostasy, that great yeah. falling away, is yeah. going to be because of this very fact. Yeah, there's uh, you know there'll be a great chasm, a great divide. In, in the body of Christ, you either compromise just to get along or you stand strong on God's word. I've already prepared my heart to stand strong on God's word. I, I won't be moved away from it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know what? If they want to go and smooch on each other, that's fine with me. You do what you want to do. But I've got rights as well. I said, you've got rights as well. Bless the Lord forevermore. And you know what? The thing of it is, they just don't want us to have no rights, period, dot, dash. 
That's all it amounts to. And uh, we're not bigots. We're not, we're not here because we're homophobic or what have you. Bless the Lord. They need Jesus like just as well as anybody else needs Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God forevermore. And we pray that the Lord gets a hold of their hearts. But I'm afraid some, they're, 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 they're literally just turned over to a reprobate mind and there never will be a change. Never will be a change. And I'm not saying that God can't change them because we know that there, there's many that have come out of that lifestyle and God has changed. Praise the Lord. But there's some, God knows the hearts. I don't know the hearts, but God knows the hearts that he turns over to a reprobate mind. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So we're believing, bless God, for the power of the Holy Spirit to move, especially on loved ones that know, know that uh, people that are in that type of lifestyle, that God get a hold of their hearts, break their hearts, and bring them back to the cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. But I say this, just prepare your hearts because it's not going to be a, a cakewalk in these last days if we stand anchored and steadfast on the word of God in, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Anybody can compromise if they want to compromise. You know, no, nobody don't want to make no waves. You know, I'm, I'm not going to make waves. You know, I don't want all these people mad at me. Well, hear me. Hallelujah. If it comes against the truth of this gospel, the Bible says we are to contend for the faith. Hello. And that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm contending for the faith. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, I live by the Constitution and bylaws of, this, of, of the United States of America. But when it goes beyond, hear me, and goes above this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey this rather than obey man. And everybody said amen, amen. and amen. You know what? If it costs tax exempt, big deal. Big deal. Amen. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm still going to pay tithes. Can I tell you? Because it's not the government that's rewarding me. My God rewards me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So that's the way that you've got to look at it. Because they'll try to hold that, like Jeff said, try to hold that over your head. You'll be tax exempt, or, or they'll take your tax exempt status away from you or what have you. And you know what? That's nothing more than witchcraft. To control a person, to intimidate and manipulate and to control. Uh, let's get out of here. I, you know, I, I don't want to talk about government. I, I, I get so tied up into it, and it just aggravates me. It just To see us going down the tubes, and, and, and seemingly nobody cares about it. You know, there's lies and cheats and steals, and it's unbelievable. You know, you're just, you, you ache on the inside, and I'm telling you what, sometimes it's hard to pray for, for, for the leadership of this nation, I'm telling you. And the only thing I, you can pray is, God, give them a, a Damascus Road experience. Humble the heart somehow in some way in the name of the Lord Jesus. Wake us up. Oh, you know, only God's going to be able to turn this whole thing around. There's no man going to turn it around. Only God, for his namesake, will turn this thing around in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I petition him in Jesus' name. God, send a Holy Ghost revival north, south, east, and west in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop and think about this. 15 years ago or 20 years ago, this wouldn't even be a conversation piece. It'd never have to even be addressed because people had common sense. What has happened? It seems like there's been a delusion, a blinder pulled over the minds and hearts of people to where they believe a lie. Is that scripture? I think that comes out of the scripture someplace. Hallelujah. We are living in end times. We are that end time dispensation that I believe we'll see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe we're that close to it in the name of the Lord. You know what? It's not going to make me mad at all. Bless the Lord. Because you know what the Lord will say? The world's not worthy of them any longer. Get them out of there. Bring them up. Son, go get your children. Bring them home. Bless the Lord so I can pass judgment upon a nation. And can I tell you something? That's the way it's going to be. I said, that is the way it's going to be. Bless the Lord forevermore. How we do, we're signing in peace treaties and pacts with uh, Iran over there, with, uh, you know, taking the, the sanctions off of them and just untying their hands, literally. And uh, our president really kicking Netanyahu underneath the bus. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, we're in trouble. That's I mean, we are in trouble. God, we need help. 
in this nation, in the name of the Lord Jesus, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I'll let that up to John. He'll explain all of that in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Anybody else tonight, bless God? Let's get into the word tonight, okay? Hallelujah. We're going to talk about the Lord's Supper because it's right in our teaching in Mark 14, 22. Mark 14, 22, this is where we left off of last week. <clears throat> Mark 14, 22. I want us to read it together, if we would, please. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave to them, said, Take, eat. This is my body. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, you don't need to turn there, but the apostle Paul says, This is my body, which is broken for you. Here we see the Lord's uh, institute of the Lord's Supper. And uh, the cho uh, children of Israel, they celebrate Passover. Even now they celebrate, break, uh, celebrate Passover up to this day, ever since the time of Moses. And of course, you know the story of the uh, celebration of Passover. I told you that, I explained that several weeks back. The death angel was going to come through and, uh, of course, you had to take a lamb, a spotless lamb that had no blemish upon it, take it and, uh, uh, to the priest and uh, the pr uh, slay it. And the priest would, would uh, take the blood out of it and sprinkle the blood on the brazen altars. And then they would take the lamb back to their household and they had to eat the whole lamb. Everybody say the whole lamb. And then they had to take some of the blood and put the blood on the doorpost of the lentils. Praise the Lord, because the Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The death angel will pass over you. The only safety when that angel come through that night, hear me, was the blood on the doorpost and them being obedient by eating the whole lamb in the name of Jesus, which speaks to us as Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. In matter of fact, this is the last supper that he will eat with them on the face of the earth until we're all home with the Lord and then we'll eat and drink anew in his kingdom in Jesus' name. And I believe that's going to be sooner than what we think. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It's going to be called, it's going to be called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Can you say that with me? The marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. One, one uh, glad morning, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, the Lord's going to uh, pick us up, our heavenly groomsmen, grab a hold of us and carry us over the threshold of the new Jerusalem in Jesus' name. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But anyhow, this Passover was going to be different as they prepared the meal. Bless God, Jesus was going to be the Passover lamb. Remember, John the Baptist said this when he seen Jesus coming and Christ was coming into his, his ministry, his three and a half years that he ministered here on the face of the earth. But he was coming to John's water baptism and John sees him and the Spirit of the Lord speaks through John and says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So you can see, you can see the, the correlation in the Old Testament, the lamb slain, and the New Testament, Christ being that spotless lamb to go to the cross and, and shed his blood and sacrifice his body for you and for me. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. You see, uh, this all instituted the ushering in of the New Testament. I want us to go to John for a second here, if you would, please. John, the sixth chapter, and the 28th verse. John 6, 28. It says this, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe, the, believe thee? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. 
And look at this, this 32nd verse, vitally important. Let's read it together. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Who do you suppose he's speaking about there? He's talking about himself. Of course, we, we know as we go down through Scripture here, they're thinking in the physical realm, and Jesus is always speaking in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. 33rd verse, read it. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Now look what he says, 35th verse. And Jesus said unto them, I am, read with me, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus is my bread of life. Hallelujah. He's given me life spiritually, praise God, forevermore. Hallelujah. He says, I am the bread of life. We eat bread today to sustain, to sustain our natural bodies. Are you hearing me? But Jesus gives us his spiritual bread, which is his body, which was broken for us on the cross of Calvary, so that we might have life and have life more abundantly. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But I said unto you, 36 verse, but I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. How many know faith is the key to eternal, eternal life? Everything that we receive from the Lord, listen, we've got to believe it. Faith is the key. Say it with me. Faith is the key of receiving from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 37th verse, And all that the Father giveth, giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Everybody say rapture. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Everybody say he's talking about me. The rapture. Hallelujah. You know why? Because I believe on the Son. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I believe he's given me life. I've partaken of, of his, his, his uh, spiritual bread. Praise the Lord. So therefore, I believe if I go by the way of the grave, and if I don't go by the way of the grave, I'm going to be raptured. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But the 40, uh, 41st verse, listen to what the Jews says. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? How many know unbelief blinds the eyes of people? It blinds the eyes of, of people. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. Christ can read our thoughts. Stop and think of this. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Once again, talking about the rapture. Praise the Lord. But get this. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Only the Spirit of God can draw people to the cross in the heart of the Father. Those are the ones that are genuinely slaves. Can I tell you something? If you're, if you're drawn by entertainment, look at me, you're not saved. Hear me, you've got to be drawn by the Spirit of the living God, because if you're not drawn by the Spirit of the living God, you're none of the children of God. That's exactly what Scripture is saying here. Praise the Lord. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God, every man thereof, or therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Going right back to Mark fourteen twenty two, And as they did eat, Jesus took bread, blessed, 
and broke it and gave to them and said, Take eat, this is my body. Hallelujah. I am the bread of life. Say it with me. I am the bread of life. Hallelujah. Only this bread gives eternal life. Are you hearing me? Only this bread gives eternal life. It says, Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are what? Dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Everybody say spiritual life. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give, help me, is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. You know, in my notes in this Bible, I put down, I got a new Bible, and I put down, thank you, Jesus, for giving us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Jews therefore strove among, them, <coughs> strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Hallelujah. How many know he gives it through the cross that he bore? You see, they couldn't see that because they couldn't see spiritually. You and I can see that plainly now. Are you hearing me? You know why? Because we're born again. We're spiritually discerned. We can discern, hallelujah, exactly what it means. Hallelujah. But to a sinner, they don't have no idea how in the world are you going to eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus Christ? They're thinking literally, drinking and eating the, blood, uh, the, the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. But Jesus is totally in totality speaking of spiritually. Hallelujah. Lest you eat of me, lest you drink of my blood, you have no part in me. You know what he's saying? Lest you accept me as Lord and Savior, the bread of life, you don't have no life giving flow inside of you. That's exactly what he's saying. Praise the Lord. Just trying to put it in Marble Town terms, okay? Bless the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them, 53rd verse, Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Of course, what I said, speaking spiritually. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Once again, speaking spiritually. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Somebody say, praise God. Hallelujah. 58th verse, let's read it. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Aren't you thankful that you're eating of the bread of life? And everybody said amen. You see, in the wilderness, children of Israel, um, they was hungry and God rained down um, upon them manna. Am I right? We've seen, we seen that, and he was talking about that in Scripture. Manna simply means, what is it? Say that with me. What is it? In Psalm 78, 25, David called it angel's food. Hallelujah. It was sweet and tasted like honey, and it was so fortified with, with uh, nutrients and vitamins that it sustained life for 40 years. Stop and think of that. Understand something. Hallelujah. Uh, after they reached the promised land, when they reached the promised land, look at me, the manna stopped coming down. Hallelujah, which, which speaks of the cross of Calvary to come. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Generations later, Jesus steps on the scene. Multitudes of humanity starving to death hear me for the bread of life, declaring, I am the bread of life. Hallelujah. That if any man eat of me, he shall live and never die. If we eat of this bread, it will give you life, and life more abundantly. And everybody said, Amen. John 10.10 10 says that. I've come to give life, and life more abundantly. Not only in this world to come, come hear me, but in the, in the world as, to, as well, that we will step into in eternity, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But understand me, this bread... It not only saves us, but it heals us and delivers us, hallelujah, right now here on the face of the earth. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Now let me show you this, bless the Lord, because it's vitally important. In Isaiah 53, 5, it says this, Isaiah 53, 5, you know it because we've quoted it several times. I want us to read it together. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Some would say, he's talking about spiritual healing here. Well, yes, spiritual healing and yes, physical healing. Some would take you to task on that and say, well, I, I really don't believe that. Well, I, I would say this, you haven't been sick enough then. Bless the Lord. But scripture will interpret itself if we just study the word. Amen. In Matthew eight sixteen and 17, let's look what, what uh, uh, Matthew, uh, through the, Jesus says here. It says this. Let's read it. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Now help me that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. You know what that tells me? It tells me that physical healing is in the atonement. It's a blood covenant right for you and I to be able to claim healing for our physical bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus. Some would say, well, you know, that's, uh, that's not really in there. Yes, it is in there. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2.24 says this. 1 Peter 2.24. It says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. This is the broken body of Christ. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were Healed. Everybody say past tense. One more time. That simply means done and accomplished. It's finished. It's a finished work. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It's accomplished. Hallelujah. Not only spiritual, but physical as well. Hallelujah. He's able to provide everything of necessity for our, our, our daily needs and for our spiritual needs in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. James 5, 14 and through 16. Bless the Lord. Just giving you a little bit of foundation that healing belongs to us because of the broken body of Christ and what he did on the cross of Calvary. Bless the Lord. James 5, 14 and 16. I want to read this together if you would. 14 through 16. Give you a little time to flip over there. As I said, I've already got it wrote down, so I could just take right off reading, but then it leaves you behind. And so I like to let people look in their Bibles so they know where it's found at. Okay, everybody there? James? James, sometimes it's, it's a hard little book to find, but it's, I think it's, it's, it's nestled right up behind uh, the book of Hebrews. Bless the Lord. James five fourteen and 16. It says this, let's read it. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. Help me. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Hallelujah. Why do we pray for people? We pray for people, hear me, that God will hear our prayers. Hallelujah, especially if they're sick, and heal them of their sicknesses. And everybody said amen. What are we doing? We're going right in line with what James is talking about. Hallelujah. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Hear me. An elder of the church is not some old person. It's somebody that's really versed in the scripture. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. So hear me. Uh, you know... Uh, to lay hands on individuals and believe when you pray for them that they're going to be healed in Jesus' name. That's the children's bread. It's blood covenant. It, we got a covenant right. Christ bought and paid for it on the cross of Calvary. 
I believe if we can trust him for our eternal salvation, we can trust him for our physical needs as well. In the name of Jesus, whether it be uh, uh, physical, financial, whatever it might be, I believe, hear me, child of God, the Lord is Jehovah Jireh. I am your provision. I am your provider in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I, you know, I really believe this, that, and the other, but I haven't seen it yet. Well, keep on believing. Don't cast your confidence away, which hath great recompense of reward, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. That's what Scripture says. Don't throw your, don't go out, and, if you put the seed in the ground, don't be a, a, a lazy farmer or a crazy farmer and go out and kick the, kick the seed out of the ground because it don't come up in, the, in two days. That's stupid. But it, sometimes it takes time for that to germinate and then all of a sudden you see the sprout. Am I right? Hallelujah. So that gives me more faith to believe, hey, something's happening here. Hallelujah. It's kind of like uh, Elijah told his servant to go out when, when there was a drought and he told his servants to go out on the horizon and look and see what, what, it, what he sees. And he went out there and he looked, said, look, and he said, I don't see anything. Come back. And uh, he said, go out again. Look again. He said, I don't see a thing. We ran back out there. I don't see a thing. He said, go out again. Look again. And said that, that Elijah prayed earnestly, put his hands or head between his legs and began to pray earnestly. And the man come back and he said, all I see is a is a, a cloud about the size of a man's hand. And, and he told, uh, uh, who was it? Ahab. He said, get your umbrellas because it's going to rain. And there's just in a, in a what, it's about a seven-year drought, I believe it was, or maybe longer than that. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But all he needed was just a cloud about the size of a man's hand, and it's going to rain in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Much power is released when people begin to pray and believe God's report in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The nine gifts of the Spirit given to the body of Christ in 1 Corinthians twelve nine. Bless the Lord. If healing wasn't for today, why would, why, would, why would Paul even describe this type of gift? He said, to another, faith, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Why would, we, why would he have the gifts of healings if healing wasn't for today? Stop and think of this. Praise the Lord. So we can see through scriptures that healing, it's provided through the broken body of Christ, all provided through the cross. The cross is a one-stop shop, and everybody said, Amen and Amen. Jesus having declared himself to be the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. He began throwing out slices of bread, hear me, to the multitudes. Stop and think of this. Hallelujah. He saw, the, he, he saw them in their sicknesses. He's seen them in their diseases. He's seen demon possessed. He's seen them dying in a dying condition. Bless the Lord. And he began to throw out slices of healing to them. Bless God. If we look at Matthew 15, 21 through 28. Perfect example. Matthew 15. <clears throat> Twenty-first verse. You see, when I when, when we partake of communion, I think of these things. These, these things run through my mind all through the the scriptures. That that man, you know, healing belongs to us. Spiritual life belongs to us. Everything's been atoned for us that, that pertains to life and godliness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, he said, Hallelujah. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Stop and think of this. What's Jesus saying? Uh, understand, he said, It's not meet for me to give the, the children's bread. He is the bread of life. He came to, to be a light to Israel, but understand something. Israel rejected their Messiah. Hallelujah. And this woman that he, that's speaking to him is a Gentile woman. Stop and think of this. 
And the Lord's going to give her a commendation of woman. Great is thy faith. Bless the Lord. But look what he says here. But he answered and said, it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs help me eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Hallelujah. Look at me. The disciples wanted to shut her up. Stop and think of it. They said, Lord, let's just take her and throw her out off the side someplace. You know, get it, shut her up. But understand me, she wouldn't be denied. Stop and think of this. She saw Jesus as a loaf of bread. Stop and think of this, hallelujah, with power to heal her child. Nobody else could heal the child of demon possession, but only Jesus, the bread of life, could heal the, her child. Even though Jesus told her that, that you know, it wasn't, he wasn't sent only except for the house of Israel. That's what he's telling her. And she paid no attention, hear me, of dispensations. Stop and think of this. You know why? She knew what she was coming for. She knew that he was the bread of life, and she knew that that bread had enough power to cast out devils in her daughter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But she pays no attention to uh, dispensations. She said, I've come to get some healing bread from my, for my daughter. Hallelujah. Again, she cries out, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Bless the Lord. His answer is this. It's not meat to take the children's bread, healing, and cast it to dogs. You know what? About this point, you and I would have been walking off. Let's be honest. Amen? We'd been walking off. Hallelujah. But faith always sees a way. Somebody say amen. It always sees a way. You see this Gentile woman answered, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat crumbs which fall from the master's table. She's saying, I know it's not right to give the children's bread to dogs. She's saying, just give me the crumbs. That's all I want. Because she knew there was enough power in the crumbs, hear me, to cast the devil out of her daughter. Now let's stop and think of this a second. A crumb the fall from the master's table delivers this little gal from demon possession. Hallelujah to the name. I want to show you what this bread's all about, child of God, and what it'll do for you. Hallelujah. It's so powerful that if you get a, just a crumb of it, stop and think of this, we get just a crumb of it, it'll deliver us and heal us. And everybody said, amen. All we need is a crumb, just a crumb. Hallelujah. If we're a child of God, understand something. You're not promised just a crumb. You're promised the whole loaf. Amen. We're promised the whole loaf. Bless God. I'm not looking for a crumb, but I want the loaf. Bless the Lord. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. There's healing in the bread of life. And everybody said, Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. This bread belongs to us. Salvation belongs to us. Deliverance belongs to us. Deliverance, our healing belongs to us. Praise God. It's our God-given right. It's our covenant right in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the benefits, hear me, child of God, of blood covenant of the broken body that Jesus was presenting before the disciples as he instituted the Lord's Supper. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Every time we partake of communion, if we're sick in our body, bless God. It's an ever reminder that Christ went to the cross for our healing as well as our salvation in Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. There's benefits as being children of God. Are you hearing me? And I believe we need to cash in on some of those benefits this side of heaven and not wait till we get to heaven. <laughs> Look at Psalms 103. Psalms 103. I love this. Psalms 103, 1 through 5. Let's read it together. Give you time to get there. How many know faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God? 
If you, know, if you don't know what you've got as being children of God, look at me, the devil will cheat you out of it. But if you see it in the Word and look at it in the Word and, and stake your claim in the Word and not be moved away from it, hallelujah, all the promises of God are yea and amen to them that believe in Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's read it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth a few of thy diseases. Who healeth all thy diseases. Hallelujah. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Hallelujah. I say thank you, Lord, for renewing my youth in the name of Jesus. Can somebody get an amen on that? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. Psalm 68, 19. Listen to what it says. Psalm 68, 19. Keep in mind, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that eats of me shall never die. He'll have eternal life. Bless the Lord. This bread sustains us, child of God. Physically and spiritually. Bless the Lord. Psalm 68, 19. Let's read it together. Bless the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah. Stop, think, and meditate upon this. That's what Selah means. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Look at me. I double dog dare you to turn somebody and say I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Maybe you don't realize it or recognize it, but understand me, we're loaded. You know what? I believe when we get to heaven, the Lord's going to say, you know what? You, lift out, you, you missed out on a lot of the benefits that I provided for you at Calvary because of lack of unbelief. Your doubt of my word. I believe there'll be a lot of things that, we'll say that, that would have been unnecessary for us to go through if we'd just believe the report of the Lord Jesus Christ. I seriously believe that. Hallelujah. And understand me, I'm as human as what you are. And, and yes, we wrestle against uh, this fleshly man constantly and continuously. And of course, doubt and unbelief comes out of the fleshly man. Amen. Hallelujah. He's got a way of, of uh, getting into your intellect and into your mind and, and put doubt, fear, worry, and anxiety there, which nullifies faith. But understand me, I don't want to be a double-minded man. I want to be a well-stabled, anchored man. And I know the Word of God can do that for us if we'll, st- if we'll keep eating the bread of life. Somebody say, keep eating. keep eating. You know what? You just don't eat of this loaf one time, but you keep eating it. Because it's, the, it's what sustains us spiritually. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We keep on eating the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, as being children of God, uh, let's accept our God-given rights. Hallelujah, that's been uh, provided for us at the cross of Calvary. You and I have benefits that we need to cash in on in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just stop and think for a second here tonight as we, we bring this down to a close. Let's stop and think of this just a second. If it's just the crumbs, if the crumbs are so powerful enough to deliver this, the demon out of this young gal. What do you think would be the result if we eat the whole loaf? Something to ponder. Hallelujah. We come to the Lord's table to eat of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I've said it before, but I want to say it again. You know, when you sit down to a table and you eat and there's something there that you really like to eat, but there's really not enough to go around for everybody. But you notice that somebody isn't eating all of what they took. And you look over and say, are you going to eat all that? And they'll say, I don't think so. I don't want it. And you say, can I have it? I don't know about you, but I want everything above and beyond, if you're not going to eat it, I'll eat it for you 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let us eat of the broken body. That's, that, that's part of the benefit of, of, of salvation. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for salvation. That's the greatest gift that we can ever, ever have as being children of God. But we can see all through Scripture. I've just picked out just a few, a, a couple on, on healing and, and deliverance and what have you. Of course, we've got a church world today don't even believe in demon possession. Stop and think of this. I don't know what they're going to believe that Jesus is a Savior if they don't believe that there's a devil. Because, hear me, what's the use of having salvation if we don't have a devil to contend with? If there's no hell to contend with, what's the use of having salvation? Stop and think of this. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. There's a real devil. There's a real hell. There's a real Jesus and real heaven. And understand me, the only way you're going to get to heaven is that you eat all of the Lamb, all of Jesus, and not just partially eat Him, but all of it. Bless the Lord. It can None of it can go to waste. I'm, and, and we're living in a country that's very wasteful. Amen? Very wasteful. I, I believe this, you know, homeless people, if they'd go to some of these dumpsters, they'd probably get fat eating out the dumpsters of, of all the stuff that we throw away. I remember when I was in the U.S. Navy and, and uh, we was overseas, and the first port that we come into, this first time I ever seen this, first part we ever come into, we had our, our garbage, you know, and we'd keep the garbage in a special place, and then we'd put it on the back. They called the fantail of, of the ship. And these, these boats would come out, and uh, they would jump on the, that garbage like, like white on rice. And, man, I mean, they would be flying through that and taking out everything they could eat. I mean, all different types of things out of that garbage. And then they'd take our garbage off for nothing. We didn't throw our garbage out in the ocean, but we kept it until we got into port. And then we would give it away, you know, to the, the, the people that would come out. And uh, they was, you know, like welfare people. And they would just dive into that garbage and get all they could eat. And understand me, if you was in the Navy, we ate real good when we was in the Navy. Nothing like the Army. Friday nights, we had frog legs. We had lobsters. <laughs> Fred, yeah. We had lobster tails. You know what? Back then, I, I could care less about a lobster tail, but we, every Friday we had lobster tails like that. You know, we could eat, eat anything you wanted to eat. Shrimps, man, was, you know, that big around, huge shrimps and, and stuff on Friday. Ham, mashed potatoes. Every day, get up, you know, you got three square meals a day. You had, uh, uh, you know, Eggs and, and toast and home fries and the, the whole kit and caboodle. Bless the Lord. We ate like kings. And a lot of things, you know, they just, you know if you didn't eat all of it, they'd throw it, throw it away. But as soon as you got into port, somebody's going to get them leftovers. Somebody's going to eat them leftovers. What they was doing, they was eating the scraps from the sailors and getting fat off the scraps. Can I tell you something? Hallelujah. We don't need to just eat the crumb. Don't let the devil lie to you and say, well, that's all you can get. Hallelujah. When there's a smorgasbord spread before you in the presence of your enemies in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Spirit, to take every benefit that belongs unto me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Healing belongs to me in Jesus' name. Healing belongs to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now understand something. If you don't talk about healing, how in the world is faith going to come? If you can't, you know, if you don't, if you don't believe, you can't believe that Jesus is a healer, how's people going to get healed? So faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. It's just like salvation. How in the world is people going to get saved? Let's just pe- give them a salvation message. You got to show to them through the word of God that they're lost and they need a savior. And as they hear that, faith is produced in their heart to receive from God Almighty. Praise the Lord. Vice versa. Hallelujah. The same with healing. We hear the word of the living God. I know when I went through a rough time a couple years, about several years back, I want to tell you something. I did nothing. I turned my television off, did nothing but listen to the word of God. Godly music with, with word being sung. That's all constantly coming into my thought pattern every day constantly. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And can I tell you something? God's seen me through my darkness into light in the name of the Lord Jesus. And therefore, I brag on Him 
in Jesus' name because I know what the devil wanted to do at that time. I, I, I certainly do. He wanted to knock me totally and completely out. But can I tell you something? Hallelujah. He might have knocked me down, but he didn't knock me out. God brought me up in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we thank God for it in Jesus' name. Thank God for all the encouragement from the body of Christ, prayers and intercessions in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Seen us through in Jesus' name. Seen many, many miracles through the years that I've ministered the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See, my, my, my grandson, uh, literally uh, uh, almost dead, give him a sentence of death and, and uh, look at him now. I mean, <laughs> such a healthy little guy. Unbelievable where he come from and what he is right now in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And we give all glory and praise and honor to God Almighty. I look at back when we couldn't have children. I told you that. But the Lord said you can have children if you believe my report. And can I tell you, we've got four girls and we've got 13 grandkids. And we say praise God because it all started with the word of God. Whose report will you believe? We believe the report of the Lord. Does that mean that, man, I'm some superhero? No, there's a lot of things that are forfeited. Are you hearing me? Because of doubt and unbelief. But I believe if we stay anchored and steadfast, we'll see our promise come down that dusty road in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm not moving away from it. We've got to be like one of those in the Old Testament and said, hear me, I'm staying in this pea patch and I'm not leaving it anymore. The devil's not coming and taking these peas away from me. I'm staying right here and I'm going to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of the eternal promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. When you're sick, you want somebody to believe in healing. Right. Come on. You want somebody laying hands on you that's going to believe that God's going to heal you in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. amen. And I believe that's the type of church that we have and we're going to have and we're going to, it's going to get greater and greater and greater and greater in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because I believe we're going to see miracle after miracle after miracle and we're going to see all nine of these gifts in operation in this church in the name of Jesus. Gift of healings, gift of faith, gift of miracles. Come on, hear me. Being produced in this house in Jesus' name. Look at me. These gifts are not just for the preacher. These gifts are for the body. They belong to you. They're a covenant right. Desire earnestly the best gifts. That's what the Lord said. Hallelujah. Some would say, man, I'd love to be able to prophesy. Well, you can. Ask God. Desire earnestly. Seek after it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd love to have the gift of miracles. Gift of faith. Are you hearing me? Gift of healings. My, 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 my. Think of that. If you have gift of faith, gift of healings, and, and gift of, of miracles... My Lord, stop and think of this. Hallelujah. Miracles don't save anybody, but it draws people. Hallelujah. Coming attractions. Bless the Lord. It will draw them so that you can lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise and walk. That man was lame from his mother's womb and Peter grabbed him by the hand and jerked him up and his ankles and, and legs gained strength and he ran into the temple running, leaping and praising God, something that he hadn't done from his mother's womb. Are you hearing me? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever, he'll do the same for you and for me in Jesus' name. Can we give him a hand clap of praise tonight? Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's just trust Him. Stand still and see what God does for you in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, I'd say this. Some of us wouldn't even be here tonight if it wouldn't be for the miracle working power of God. You know that as well as I know it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only God that sustains you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Seth, closes in prayer. Would you, brother? Father, Lord, we thank you for your life. Thank you, Lord, that, uh, Lord, that you are the bread of